Two days ago, Mount Etna's tremor readings shot past anything seen this year, triggering emergency alerts from Italy's top volcano scientists. Tremor is not just rumbling. It is a continuous signal that magma is building pressure beneath the surface and refusing to calm down. For now, the mountain looks silent, but the seismic logs tell a story of invisible upheaval. What exactly is happening beneath Etna, and how close are we to witnessing a dramatic change few will see coming? Inside the INGV command center in Catania, the mood changed the moment the tremor graphs started to climb. At 2.13 in the morning, seismic monitoring software flagged a spike and tremor amplitude had jumped to five times its usual baseline. This was not a passing blip. Over the next hour, the numbers kept rising, breaking through thresholds that usually take days or weeks to reach. By sunrise, the tremor signal held steady at nearly 10 times normal, setting off an internal alert protocol. Duty seismologists rotated in, eyes fixed on live feeds from summit stations as automated systems logged each new surge. The last time readings hovered this high for so long, Etna erupted within days. Every few minutes, fresh data poured in from a network of sensors blanketing the volcano. Each station, whether perched on the rim of the southeast crater or anchored deep on the lower slopes, fed a stream of numbers into the control room. The team tracked not just amplitude, but the frequency patterns that distinguish routine background noise from the signature of pressurized magma on the move. On the main display, a red band crept higher across the screen, mapping the relentless climb. No one in the room needed to say it. This was not routine. INGV's emergency protocol snapped into place. Hourly status bulletins were drafted for civil protection authorities and direct lines opened to aviation officials in Catania. The command center's whiteboard filled with time-stamped notes. At 3.10 in the morning, tremor eight times baseline sustained. At 3.45 in the morning, the southeast crater sensor confirmed. As the hours passed, the sense of waiting deepened. The mountain itself gave no outward sign, but the instruments told a different story. Something below was pushing hard and the pressure was not letting up. For the scientists watching the data in real time, every minute brought a new question. How long could the system hold before something had to give? Volcanic tremor is the constant background vibration that signals Mount Etna's internal workings. Unlike the sharp jolt of an earthquake, tremor is a low, continuous hum, an unbroken signal that often falls between 1 and 10 hertz on seismic instruments. This hum is created as magma pushes upward, grinding against the rock and forcing volcanic gases to escape. The more forceful the movement, the stronger and steadier the tremor becomes. Scientists rely on this signal because it reveals what is happening deep below, long before any eruption reaches the surface. At Etna, a certain level of tremor is always present. The volcano breathes, even in quiet times with a baseline that rarely draws attention. But when the amplitude surges and holds, as it has now, the meaning changes. Persistent, elevated tremor points to pressurized magma on the move, not just a passing disturbance. It is the difference between a passing train and one that stops and rumbles at the station, shaking the ground for hours. To make sense of these vibrations, Volcanologists do not just watch the tremor's strength. They study its frequency patterns and compare them to decades of past data. One key tool is the B value, a measure that tracks the ratio of small to large earthquakes near the volcano. When the B value rises, it suggests magma is rising from deep reservoirs, easing pressure in the rocks above. When it drops, it can mean new magma is entering from below building stress inside the mountain. Research at Etna shows that B value changes can appear weeks or even months before any gas plume or thermal anomaly signals unrest. Together, tremor amplitude and B value trends give scientists a predictive window. They can spot when Etna's plumbing system is shifting from stable to unstable and when the risk of eruption quietly grows. 
Understanding these signals is the foundation for every decision made in the command center and for every warning issued to people living on Etna's slopes. Three independent monitoring systems now show the same story. Mount Etna's internal activity is intensifying across the board. The seismic tremor, already running at nearly 10 times its normal background, continues to hold at those levels. On the graphs, the amplitude line has flattened out at this elevated plateau, with no sign of the usual drop-off that would suggest a passing fluctuation. Instead, the signal's persistence points to a sustained process deep inside the volcano. Magma is moving, and it is not slowing down. At the same time, GS emission readings are climbing sharply. Instruments trained on the summit craters, as well as satellite sensors such as Sentinel-5P, are picking up sulfur dioxide plumes far above seasonal averages. These sulfur dioxide values have broken through the two Dobson unit mark a threshold that typically signals fresh magma is rising and releasing its gas load near the surface. The chemistry tells its own tale. The source is not old degassed lava, it is new material, still rich in volatiles, pushing upward through the system. Thermal cameras focused on the southeast crater add a third layer of evidence. Over the past 24 hours, the persistent glow has grown brighter and more widespread. Infrared feeds show temperature readings at the crater rim well above those logged in previous weeks. The pattern matches what has been seen before major eruptive episodes, a slow build followed by a sudden, sustained increase in thermal output as magma nears the surface. The southeast crater, Etna's most active vent in recent years, is once again showing signs of intense heating just below ground. Each of these signals, tremor, gas, and heat can fluctuate on their own. But when all three rise together and stay high, the volcano's internal machinery is working in sync. The magnitude and duration of these changes are not typical for Etna's routine background activity. Instead, the data points to a coordinated push from below with pressure building and multiple warning lights now flashing at once. When multiple warning systems on Mount Etna start to rise in unison, the volcano's risk profile changes dramatically. Dr. Boris Banke, a senior volcanologist at ING5, has described these moments as a compound warning, a rare alignment where tremor, gas emissions, thermal output, and ground inflation all climb together. This convergence is not just a statistical oddity. Decades of research at Etna have shown that when these signals stack up, the volcano is entering a phase where the pressure below is not only building, but actively seeking release. The southeast crater stands out in this scenario. Since 1971, it has developed into Etna's most responsive outlet, often acting as the main escape route for rising magma. Whenever deep pressure surges, the southeast crater is usually the first to respond its vents glowing hotter, its gas output spiking, and its seismic sensors picking up the earliest tremor shifts. In the past five years, nearly every major eruptive episode has started here, following a familiar script. All key indicators rise at once, and the southeast crater becomes the focal point for the volcano's energy. This pattern is not lost on the scientists in Catania. The last time Etna's systems aligned so clearly was in December 2018, just days before a strong paroxysm and a damaging earthquake struck the eastern flank. In 2021, a similar compound warning preceded the February lava fountain sequence, with thermal, seismic, and gas data all rising in parallel and the southeast crater leading the way. The current alignment bears the same hallmarks, sustained tremor at 10 times the normal level, sulfur dioxide emissions above two Dobson units, and persistent heat at the summit vents. GPS measurements are now picking up subtle swelling on the eastern slopes, a sign that magma is pushing upward and outward. For volcanologists like Dr. Banke, this is the moment when routine monitoring turns into high alert. As he has put it in recent bulletins, when tremor, 
gas, heat, and deformation align, the window for surface activity narrows. The risk is not hypothetical anymore. It is mechanical. The mountain's plumbing is under pressure, and every instrument is now watching for the first sign that the system will break. Below the summit craters, a new pattern of seismicity has taken hold. Over the last 12 hours, a swarm of shallow earthquakes has rippled through the upper five kilometers of Etna's eastern and central conduits. These are not the large, jarring quakes that shake villages on the volcano's slopes. Instead, they are rapid-fire bursts of micro-seismicity, hundreds of tiny fractures, with magnitudes rarely exceeding 2.0, but occurring in tight clusters and at shallow depths. Each event is a brief, sharp signal that stands out against the background hum of volcanic tremor, and together they tell a story of rock being physically forced apart. For volcanologists, this swarm is a mechanical fingerprint. The shallow quakes map out the places where pressurized magma is cracking open new pathways, prying at the brittle rock near the summit. These fractures typically form between zero and five kilometers below the surface, precisely where Etna's magma is now believed to be accumulating. The frequency and distribution of these events reveal the stress inside the volcano's upper conduit system. When the number of quakes rises sharply, it means the internal plumbing is under strain and the rock is reaching its breaking point. Dr. Sonia Calvari from INGV has studied these patterns for decades. In her analysis, the current swarm is especially significant for two reasons. First, the quakes are tightly grouped beneath the southeast crater, Etna's most active vent. Second, the swarm's persistence Hours of repeated fracturing without a drop in activity suggests a sustained push from below, not just a passing pulse of gas or steam. According to Calvari, this kind of seismic response is one of the clearest signs that magma is on the move, actively forcing its way upward and preparing the ground for a possible breakthrough. As the shallow earthquakes continue, The evidence points to a system under mounting mechanical stress. The fractures themselves act as pressure valves, but when the rate of cracking outpaces the rock's ability to heal, the risk of a larger structural failure grows. The mountain is not simply shaking, it is being remade from within, one microquake at a time. On the eastern slopes of Mount Etna, the ground itself is beginning to rise. Measurements from the volcano's dense network of GNSS stations show uplift, subtle but unmistakable. Over the past 36 hours, sensors anchored in the rocky soil have detected the surface pushing upward by several millimeters, with the strongest movement concentrated along a broad arc stretching from the Valle del Bove to the lower flanks below the southeast crater. For a mountain as massive as Etna, even a one or two millimeter shift signals a remarkable force at work below. This swelling is not random. The GNSS time series, updated in near real time, traces the progression of inflation with precision. Each station logs its position down to a fraction of a millimeter, allowing scientists to watch the mountain breathe as magma accumulates in the shallow crust. The current pattern matches what has been seen before major eruptive episodes, a slow, steady expansion most pronounced on the volcano's eastern side, where the crust is thinnest and the plumbing system runs closest to the surface. Inflation like this does not happen in isolation. It is the mechanical response to magma forcing its way upward, pressing outward against the rock, and lifting the ground above. The fact that GNSS sensors are picking up this movement at multiple stations, and that the uplift is sustained rather than pulsing, confirms that a significant volume of magma is gathering at shallow depth. This is not the kind of deformation caused by seasonal temperature swings or rainfall. It is the signature of internal pressure building, the mountain straining to contain what lies beneath. Modern GNSS networks have transformed the way volcanologists track these changes. Where once only large, obvious deformations could be spotted, today's sensors catch the earliest hints of movement often days before any visible eruption. At Etna, 
these millimeter scale uplifts have repeatedly foreshadowed paroxysms, giving scientists a critical window to warn civil authorities and the public. The data now streaming in from the eastern slopes fits this established pattern, reinforcing the evidence from tremor, gas, and heat. The volcano's internal reservoir is filling, and the pressure is not abating. December 2018 stands as a reminder of how quickly Etna's calm can unravel. In the days leading up to Christmas, seismic instruments started recording a steady climb in volcanic tremor, echoing the patterns now unfolding. By December 24th, the amplitude had doubled from its seasonal average. Within 48 hours, the mountain's internal pressure found its outlet. On December 26, the magnitude 4.8 earthquake struck the eastern flank, damaging homes and sending cracks through centuries-old buildings in Flary and Zafirana at Nea. The quake did not just shake the ground. It forced authorities to close sections of the highway between Catania and Messina and reroute traffic away from unstable slopes. At Catania International Airport, 30 kilometers south of the summit, the airspace filled with ash. Flight controllers activated emergency protocols and monitored the plume's altitude minute by minute. Departures and arrivals halted as a gray curtain drifted over the runways, grounding planes for hours and stranding travelers in the terminal. One airport official later described the scene. When the ash readings hit our threshold, we had no choice. Safety comes first. The mountain decides when we fly. The 2018 episode showed how a surge in tremor when paired with ground deformation and gas spikes, can upend daily life far beyond the crater. For scientists and civil authorities, these lessons are never theoretical. They shape every alert and every decision made as Etna's signals rise. The next 48 to 72 hours will decide how this episode unfolds. INGV's monitoring teams remain on continuous watch, updating bulletins every hour as new data streams in. Every instrument, seismic, thermal, gas, and GPS feeds into this window of heightened vigilance. Scientists know from decades of experience that when Etna's warning signs align like this, the probability of surface activity rises sharply. The mountain has a history of moving from quiet to eruption in less than two days when all systems point in the same direction. For now, the official guidance is clear. Stay tuned to INGV's official channels. Their updates are the first line of defense for residents, travelers, and emergency planners across eastern Sicily. The coming days are not just routine observation. They are a critical test of Etna's internal balance. The question is not whether the volcano is restless, but how and when it will choose to release the pressure building beneath its slopes. For everyone living in Etna's shadow, the clock is now ticking. Right now, Etna's instruments are capturing a volcano on the edge. It signals echoing patterns that have triggered sudden eruptions before. Across Sicily, scientists monitor tremor data in real time, knowing a single upward spike could change everything. Nature's warning system does not wait for permission. The world watches, reminded that some forces write their own timelines. If you are following Etna's story, share your thoughts in the comments below.